The Chuck Wagon Gang, in my opinion, are truly American musical royalty. And if you go back to the beginning of that group in the 1930s, if you look around the musical landscape of America at that time, Louis Armstrong was representing jazz, you know, the blues and hot music. Uh, Bob Wills and his guys, the Carter family from the Appalachian Mountains. But the Chuck Wagon Gang were there. Had they done nothing else except record I'll Fly Away, their legacy would have been secure, you know, for all times. The Chuck Wagon Gang was a family, and their name was Carter. No relation to the Carter family of Virginia. And when they were starting out, times were especially hard. The Great Depression was going on. You had migrant farmers going to areas where they might be able to work to hopefully feed their families. The Depression hit especially hard in rural Texas. It hit hard early, and it stayed long and deep. Any flicker of hope, any rumor of hope, was seized upon. And here comes the Chuck Wagon Gang. My recollection may have been a 15-minute radio program. It lifted spirits. When the radio went off, spirits would drop down again, but they were higher than when the program came on. They actually began back in the early 1930s, and they were living out in West Texas. It was Mom and Dad Carter and nine kids. My grandmother, Anna, her real name, Effie, uh, was one of those nine kids, and uh, they were itinerant cotton field hands. And they were literally living hand to mouth. It was a very tough existence. And my grandmother got very sick, and they had, at that time, run out of work, and so there was no money for a doctor or medicine. So Dad Carter decided, I guess he'd do the only other thing they knew how to do, which was sing. And they took his oldest son, Jim, his oldest daughter, Rose, and they went to a local station there in Lubbock. They were placed on the radio there. They got the job. They were paid uh, their first week's salary in advance. It was $12.50. So that's how they got their start on the radio as a trio. When my grandmother got the medicine, she got better, joined the trio, they formed the Carter Quartet. When they got to Fort Worth, Texas in 1936, they became the Chuck Wagon Gang. Radio was the magic carpet which took you places. And what the Chuck Wagon Gang did was take you to a higher, better, happier place. Moses stood on the holy ground, far from God descended down, set the road. The way that the Chuck Wagon Gang really started singing, they would come in after working all day in the fields and they would gather out on the back porch and they would sing Western ballads and probably hymns and sacred songs. And, and my grandmother told me one time that by the time that they had finished their work and actually got out there to begin singing, it was dark. And so they knew that the other field hands and their neighbors had come around to listen because they could see the light from the cigarettes in the, in the darkness, little red lights. And they knew that their their uh, other field hands were there listening in, so kind of their first audience, if you will. In the 1930s, companies went to remote locations, oftentimes in hotels. The setting for the Chuck Wagon Gang's first session was November 25th, 1936, at the Gunner Hotel in San Antonio, Texas. They recorded 22 songs that day. There were some sacred and some. Western ballad and heart songs and things like that, but the very first song that they recorded that day was The Sun Hath Made Me Free. Don Law was an Englishman who immigrated to the United States in the 1920s and gradually became involved in artisan repertoire duties for the American Recording Company, which eventually became Columbia Records. He signed an impressive array of talent over the many years that he was with that label. The Chuck Wagon Gang was one of the first and ironically, it was the longest account that he ever held. When you look at the roster of people that Don Law produced through the years, and you think about the likes of Lefty Frizzell, Marty Robbins, Ray Price, Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs, Johnny Cash, Jimmy Dean, Little Jimmy Dickens, the list just goes on and on and on. Don Law had a great eye and a great ear for talent. In addition to discovering the Chuck Wagon Gang, he also signed Robert Johnson, the other interesting tidbit about all of this is, is that Robert Johnson supposedly sold his soul to the devil at a crossroads in exchange for becoming the greatest blues guitarist of that time. And during that same period of sessions, here's the Chuck Wagon Gang who go on to become America's foremost country gospel singers making their debut recordings. I can almost see heaven from where I stand. Shout it from the rock of ages. Go 
gonna meet my Jesus when I get home. Shout it from the rock of ages. Can't wait to finally see who my heart's always known. Shout it from the rock of ages. Glory to the Lamb, glory to the Lamb, Master, loving Savior, and the Great I Am. You can read all about it. hope you've enjoyed this video from New Haven Collections. For more videos like this, you can check out their website by clicking the box above. Also, be sure to check out another one of our YouTube community partners, 615 Hideaway, for fantastic country music videos. Plus, you can see some of your favorite shows in their entirety at www.countryroadtv.com. Thanks for watching.